I've managed to go most of my existence without ever experiencing an ounce of Pikmin gameplay, which is crazy because I was born and raised on buckets of Nintendo slop. I've always wanted to see what life was like amongst the tribe, especially considering I don't think I've ever heard a single person say anything remotely bad about Pikmin. It feels like the only two sides are people who haven't played Pikmin and people who start barking for a creature named Blorpo. Instead of starting with the most recent game, I wanted to go back to a time filled with that delectable 2000 2001 smell so I could begin my journey with Pikmin 1. And just because I think it's funny, you should know that as a kid, I always assumed Pikmin was some kind of peaceful little farming game like Harvest Moon. I just really want you to keep that in mind because the game doesn't even take 15 seconds for our ship to get obliterated by a giant meteor and crash land us onto an unknown planet where if I don't manage to rebuild my ship in a mere 30 days, I will run out of oxygen and die. So with all that in mind, let's start at day Waking up, I took control of the main character, Captain Olimar. Fearing poisonous oxygen and with crippling loneliness setting in, I was determined to find the necessary ship parts, and by that I mean bumbling around until I stumbled upon a special little machine called an onion. With the right materials, this will allow me to create more and more Pikmin, starting with our very first introduction to the little guys themselves. Just like real children, they need several pages of info before I can understand their controls. Soon enough, I figured out how to pull them around like an angry mom in Walmart. The rest of the first day was spent creating as many Pikmin as I could, reading more and more controls, and getting to know these guys to see what they can truly accomplish, which as it turns out is pushing boxes and the ability to clip in and out of reality. I managed to find our first ship part, and after I gathered the necessary Pikmin power required, it was brought back to the ship and the first day had officially ended. With 29 parts and 29 days remaining, I wasn't too terribly worried, but Something that Olimar said about the Pikmin not being able to survive overnight stuck out to me. What kind of reason would the Pikmin have to- We're heading into the first area with some real substance, the Forest of Hope, something I haven't felt in approximately 24 hours. I brought my Pikmin out from their onion home and put them to work taking down this wall, and yet behind it, I couldn't help but notice an unfamiliar creature searching for its next meal. Well, you know what they say, it's eat or be eaten. Surprisingly, my first combat interaction of the game went a lot smoother than I expected. If this is all the world of Pikmin has to throw at me, then we're gonna be just fine. Oh, what a sad, confused delusion. After bringing back a couple corpses, I learned that if Pikmin suck down enough juicy nectar, it'll make them stronger and faster. And if we weren't already stressed enough, there's another mechanic that was kept secret until right now the clock. Not only do we have a short 30 day time span to fix our ship, but each day has a clock constantly looming over us, and if we don't make it back by curfew, we're gonna get grounded. And by that, I mean buried six feet under. In lighter news, I was able to find the second piece of the ship to bring back, and I took down my first sizable opponent, the Bulborb. Apparently, these two aren't technically of the same species, but I don't care. That's Bulbus Jr. I tried to get my Pikmin to complete building a bridge, but it looks like they're working towards a different kind of completion. A few more extinction methods methods later, and I found another onion, only this one was meant for yellow Pikmin. These guys can be thrown much higher than other types of Pikmin, for reasons I can only assume is because those ears give the powers of a flying squirrel. The day quickly turned to night, where when there's only 10 seconds left, giant text appears on screen because why not, I could always use more anxiety. And with that, our long day has come to an end. Alright, back to work. Day three is the first time I got to take out the max Pikmin limit of 100. To think I already had so many soldiers by my side filled me with a great deal of confidence. And with the bridge complete too, everything was looking up. I don't think I've ever been that speechless in my life. Pikmin not surviving in water, okay, I get that. Soggy vegetables equals bad. But apparently the Pikmin bridge, built with Pikmin, designed by Pikmin, created for Pikmin, and quality assured by Pikmin, was too small for the Pikmin to walk across. Well, if you've got a surplus of soldiers, then I guess you could spare to lose some, right? Isn't that why we fight wars? I discovered that the yellow Pikmin are able to pick up these weird glowing stones, which turned out to be bomb rocks. I tossed a few of them at this wall, but some ended up going over it, and with them stuck between a bomb and a hard place, 
I am so sorry. So it's barely even noon, and I've accidentally begun population control. Fortunately, I learned even Bulborbs aren't immune to the power of explosives, but it doesn't matter much anyways, because apparently this guy had friendly fire on. I fought my way through a battle with slug creatures and found my third ship part, the radar. This allowed me to actually have a map to see where the other lost pieces are and how many Pikmin I'm forgetting about. I blew up some more walls, this time being extra careful about how I use these things. Who would have thought explosions were dangerous? I tried to use two bombs to take out this bull board blocking my path, but one of them just straight up chickened out for no reason. So enjoy snacking on nine of my Pikmin. Asshole. Inevitably, the night was upon us, and I could finally head back to camp to relax. After losing 22 Pikmin, I learned my lesson. I don't expect to ever be using bombs to fight enemies again. I began this beautiful day by grabbing a giant yellow thing that allows me to get more dudes. I spotted a ship part tucked away behind not only a steep ledge, but my new worst enemy, water. I made the very bold decision to toss my Pikmin onto this ledge so I could walk up and safely around as Olimar. I collected my little guys so I could sneak past the Bulborb until my ego got the best of me and he took a bite out of Olimar's nose. But it all worked out anyways because we got the fourth part. All of my red Pikmin were set to take down this wall and in the meantime I took my yellow guys out for a hearty helping of bombs. These tough stone walls can only be broken with explosives. So thanks to my work the day before and some right now, I was able to get the fifth part. The day wasn't even half over and we had made amazing progress but we couldn't let it stop there behind the wall the red pikmin broke down was another piece guarded by some bulborbs its back was turned the child was removed from this world my entire army was storming from all sides what could possibly go wrong a lot the answer was a lot the bulborb had managed to pick up and eat some yellow pikmin holding bombs this is great it'll do so much damage yay bombs the explosion was so big it managed to take out both him and the little friends who gave their lives how heroic i'll never forget you our heroes but before i could do anything the explosion had caused a chain reaction Almost my entire squad was wiped out. I barely had enough left to carry home the corpse of what might have been the Grim Reaper. Did I deserve this? Did my Pikmin deserve this? Is this what I get for spamming grenades right before someone kills me in Halo? My brain searched for answers as I brought the sixth part back to my ship. I got three parts this day, but it cost me more than I could describe. The sun had set, so I was just ready to call it a night and regroup. But to make things even worse, I had forgot a Pikmin. Earlier, I wondered why the Pikmin would be fearful of the night, and now it was made abundantly clear. On day four, I lost 73 Pikmin and left one behind. 74 beautiful faces, all named Humphrey, lost to the void. I vowed to never let this happen again. But it might, in which case I'm sorry. It was time for a new day, a new chance to be better. And after a little bit of stress relief, I was ready to venture into our next area, the Forest Naval. If I struggled with sunshine and flowers, then surely a dark, dirty cave will be the thing to fill my spirits. I got my Pikmin started on a few tasks, but most importantly, I had stumbled across the final onion that would make our squadron complete, Blue Pikmin. These guys have the simple but extremely useful ability to exist in water. Finally, a counter to the true final boss. I built up as many of these guys as I could right now, and the rest of my time was spent massacring anything that looked at us funny. It didn't seem like we'd be able to find any ship parts for the day until I noticed my Pikmin dragging some creature around. I thought they were just scoring some dinner, but when I came back to base, I watched it blunt force trauma its own head into the onion and spit out my space floaty, aka the seventh part. I don't know what it's like to have children, but a sense of pride and a feeling to call them all champ was overwhelming in this moment. I now had a platoon of all sorts of little guys ready for the challenge. Things were looking promising, I hope. Considering the impact site had only one ship part left remaining, I thought it would be a good idea to spend today finishing this place up instead of worrying about it later. This area is littered with these pellet things that are able to create tons of Pikmin. So if something goes wrong, that's great to know. 
Hello, bombs. Being extremely careful, I successfully blew up the wall, revealing a bed of water behind it, with a clam suspiciously holding what looks like one of those things you use to inflate a yoga ball. Turns out it's another lost piece, so I threw a couple Pikmin in to see how many would be required to carry it. <laughs> A large part of me knew that would happen, and yet I allowed it in the name of science. After whittling down the clam's health, we were able to pop out the part and bring it to safety. The same could not be said for this guy. That adventure took just about the entirety of our time here, and I was barely able to bring back the part and locate any stragglers before they were left out for a Bulborb's 3am DoorDash order. Back to the Forest of Hope, I noticed there were a few unsprouted Pikmin away from the main base. I was confused why that would be until I realized this was the extinction site from day 4, so the nutrients from the fallen corpses must have seeped into the ground and planted some new ones. It's a good thing too, I was running low on Pikmin that run into the water for no reason at all. After maneuvering around the scary blue liquid, I put them to work tearing down a wall, where another ship part was hiding. While that was happening, I spent half the day culling most of the various creatures. At this point, I couldn't tell you if this was for fun or for business. Every moment is spent experiencing loss on one side or the other. It feels like every step I take is the wrong one, and every path I go down leads me closer and closer to my own demise. Oh cool, the wall's done. Behind it was a large monster I hadn't seen before, so it must be time for my first boss fight. I walked in confidently, like I definitely didn't just soil my spacesuit out of fear, and the battle began. The moment the monster looked at us, my innate reaction was to throw as many Pikmin as possible. Turns out that worked, and I clogged up some holes, which gave me enough time to attack his patented giant glowy spot. A few back shots later, and somehow I won having only lost one single Pikmin. Unfortunately, due to work hours, we were not able to fully bring the part back, but we did score ourselves a walking MRE. <laughs> I wasted no time jumping back in to get what was rightfully ours, a ship part that I can only assume is my signature comically large cereal bowl. I appreciate the Pikmin's effort, but this just feels kind of disturbing. Today the plan is to venture across the lake to grab another part that has to be some kind of chaos emerald. I chose my squadron carefully and started working to build some bridges so we could cautiously bring the piece back. There wasn't really a whole lot for me to do, so I kind of just sat and watched as everyone else did all the hard work. Turns out the next piece is a gift from Olimar's son. I completely forgot that he had one of those. Don't worry Olimar, even if you don't make it back to your family, you've still got 411 plant children that love you. 410. There was now officially only one part left to get in this area, and after exterminating what I'm pretty sure was every Bulborb ever, we arrived at our destination. But it was blocked off by, wouldn't you know it, a single cardboard box and oh great, curfew. So we shuffled back home as quick as we could, almost lost a few of these guys thanks to these things known as walls, and ended our day. I was extremely confident that tomorrow we would complete the Forest of Hope on day- Today was the day. We were about to make a giant step towards our overall completion of the Supertron Hypernova ship. Olimar can pretend he named it the Dolphin, but I know what it's really called. I grabbed a whole buffet's worth of red Pikmin and set out proudly to move that cardboard casket out of the way. I forgot that boxes can't be moved from this side. That's embarrassing. Pathetically, I wandered around trying to see if I could access it from another angle. How did that even happen? Eventually, I neuralinked with my Pikmin and they told me, Blue water go. So yeah, all right, I figured it out. I knew that I was gonna be in for a fight. I went back to swap out my blues for reds because they're stronger, I think probably. I made my way back and before the battle even started, I was already losing. Who thought this was a good idea? Seriously, this thing is like maybe five Olimars wide and he has a canonical height of 0.75 inches, meaning this patch of land is roughly actually a good size. Some would say that's pretty big. I entered the arena to scope out the lay of the land. Turns out they were the land. Two giant bird creatures that I am going to name Dozo Bozo started viciously chomping at my team. This would be going a lot better if I had any depth perception at all. Tossing Pikmin after Pikmin inevitably led to the defeat of the first one. I was starting to run low on soldiers, so it's a good thing it looks like they're going to get reinforcements. One dangerous battle later, the second creature was taken down. All that was left was to find out where the ship part was hiding. No 
Oh, there's a third one! Nobody could have ever seen this coming. Fortunately, taking on one of them at a time was a lot easier than taking on two. It's almost like I should have been a little more cautious. Finally, we had found the last piece of the area, but thanks to the clock ticking down, nighttime was on us fast and there was no chance to rest. We couldn't let anything slow us down or it would be too late. I almost lost like 30 Pikmin to one Bulborb, but he barely missed his bite and then got lazy and lost interest. There was nothing I could do but sit, wait, and hope. And as the clock hit one second, the ship part was delivered and the first area was completed. The Pikmin that gave their lives today, it wasn't in vain. For the first time, I felt like we were gonna make it back home. Our conquest continues back into the forest navel. Instead of a hundred bulbous juniors running around, we'll have to deal with these fiery blowhog creatures, scientifically known as Sus Draconis, who are basically powerless against even a single red Pikmin thanks to their fire immunity which I don't have. While those guys are steamrolling everything in their path, I set up the rest of my team to quickly build us a bridge leading to my gravity jumper, which was promptly brought back to the ship. Afterwards, I accidentally got three reds trapped between water and a 12 centimeter high cliff, but surely they can build this bridge in time, so good luck. Our next part was not only surrounded by water, but it was guarded deep inside Frog Kingdom. I gathered up as many blues as possible to retrieve the prehistoric VR headset, and somehow by the grace of the Pikmin gods, not a single soul was squashed by these frogs tirelessly chasing us back home. Fire is a different story. The rest of the squad was able to make it safely back home, but with so much time left in the day, we went and scored another prize. I don't have anything funny to say about this, I'm just really proud we got three parts in one day with minimal casualties. Big emphasis on minimal. And don't worry, I made sure to go back for these guys. Bizarrely, a yellow Pikmin was with them, but if I've learned anything in 10 days, it's to not ask questions. Day 11 would involve our most complicated strategy yet. There's a ship part located along the very narrow edge of this path, but getting there is not as straightforward as I'd hoped. Luckily, we can start by scooping up a different piece that's extremely close to base. So just in case things go terribly wrong, I've already put in my hours for the day. Breaking down this barrier reveals it's not just a small path, it's also littered with fire geysers. So to avoid them, the Pikmin and I sort of just shove our faces in the wall and shuffle along. Eventually, we find and construct a very long bridge, and finally, here's where it gets complicated. I need to split up my group, make sure they don't drown, and get blue team to break open this water spout. Next, I throw yellow team up on the ledge using their flying squirrel abilities, and I can follow close behind. Once again, I need these yellows to soar so they can bring down the part itself, and then it's time to hand it off to red team, as they'll be able to bring it back without any regards to giant puffs of fire. Unfortunately, brother thought he was on the team. Sundown struck before we could fully make it back, but overall, that mission went surprisingly well. A torched plant and a few forgotten sacrifices to Frog Kingdom, things could have been worse. Immediately, I went to secure the Chaos Emerald left behind from yesterday, and then begrudgingly had to scrape my way back through the Path of Pain. On the other side was a pool of water holding my analog computer part captive. So while my blue guys took care of that, I explored and got distracted by a red flower. Very cool, right? Yeah, well, while I was doing that, I completely forgot that fire is still an obstacle, and by the time I realized, it was far too late. And I ended up leaving two Pikmin behind, so I had to go back and get them. One out of two ain't so bad. Ultimately, the part was collected relatively safely, and I decided to spend the rest of the day bolstering our numbers. Thank goodness, too, because we sprouted 28 and lost 27. That's gonna shake up the charts. With only two treasures remaining here and some kind of shadowy monster lurking between them, I hired the strongest plant-based hitmen in town to finish the job. The dark area I opened up yesterday proved to be home to the big boss. Don Mush. That fungus armor made its defenses impenetrable, but luckily, its weak spot just so happens to be the entire rest of its body. I'm just as surprised as you are, but the Dawn was beaten without losing a single Pikmin. Nice. These soldiers did not linger when it came to gathering up the mushroom corpse with a side order of ship part, so we just needed to make it out of Frog Kingdom once more. You, you're so stupid. 
I thought that it'd be the last of our combat trials for now, but as soon as I entered a wide open area where the final part was supposed to be, I realized I was delusional. This thing tap danced all over my Pikmin. For the love of God, do not put my ass up against a spider-like creature with cartoonishly long legs. Eventually, it did lower its weak spot, and the surviving members were able to smash its core before it caused another tragedy. Does losing 20 Pikmin count as a tragedy? 25 if we include the ones lost to the Flames of War on the way back. Depositing the guard satellite means that the forest naval was cleared, granting us time to reflect, repopulate, and prepare for tomorrow as we journey to our third and final area, the Distant Spring. This place fucking sucks. The last two areas had the home base mostly guarded off, but here it's the wild, wild west of Pikmin. 20 feet from camp, which in Olimar sizing is like three millimeters, is a giant balloon creature and a new species of these guys. Considering he's new, I'll be naming him Old Bulbous Jr. They aren't too terrible to take down, but only a single whiff is needed before all hell breaks loose. Thanks to backshot tactics, we were able to clear out quite a few enemies, but I discovered a more fierce some opponent, and I'm not talking about water. If the previous area is home to the Frog Kingdom, then this is the Frog Empire. The whole time this bridge was getting built, a royal guard stood there poised and ready to leap. I decided to retreat for now and try for a different objective. This might have been the worst mistake possible. The other closest part was surrounded by water. I was instructed and assured by a close, reliable friend that the only way to retrieve it was... You're gonna get it down with yellows and then you're gonna want blues to carry it the rest of the way back. I completely trust you because we are friends and I trust you, my friend. I replied. But after crossing the narrow path, a question was asked far too late. Can you do this with blue Pikmin? Dude, forced to watch the water become not so all blue anymore, I thought back and realized there was absolutely no reason I would have needed yellow Pikmin whatsoever. I just realized you might be able to just do that with blue Pikmin. Dude, all of my yellow Pikmin just died. And if it wasn't bad enough already, we weren't even able to get the part back thanks to the passage of time. Can you just do that with blue Pikmin? Shut up, Ben. I may have been indirectly lied to, causing the sacrifice of dozens, but to be honest, I've lost a lot more for a lot less. I made sure to grab a bunch of blues this time because I wasn't going to do anything else until this piece was back on board the Supertron Hypernova Starship. Is that what I named it? I even learned a new technique to deal with the ever-growing empire. I can punch frogs. That marks our 20th part collected, meaning we finally only have 10 left. Will it cost another 232 Pikmin lives to get there? Holy, I hope not, but I just lost another 20 to the power of a single frog, so it's not looking good. Thank God the massage machine has been retrieved. Our next part was stuffed inside a balloon creature and guarded by slugs, but it didn't take too long to win the battle and collect our prize. This frog took out five of my Pikmin, leaving just barely enough to take it back home. It's almost as if he only let us live so we could warn the others. All in all, the day ended pretty uneventfully, aside from the part where I released a giant ethereal shadow frog, but hey, would you look at that, we're out of time. It wouldn't truly be Pikmin if disaster doesn't come for me throwing a single bomb. To get our next part, we needed to clear out an old Bulbous and its youngins. Scientifically known as the young old Bulbous, I couldn't believe the power output from my team in delivering some left-right good night. Now with the area safely aired out, I got to utilize my yellow Pikmin in the spot where their high soaring ears were actually needed, scoring us the UV lamp. The next objective was close by, only it was stuck in the middle of a tree stump surrounded by fire traps and guarded by enemies. But we already dealt with this same group just a minute ago, so... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This has gone disastrous. <sighs> no, the water! You're just gonna have to bomb him, boys. Just let it, just, just, just let it happen. How is he still alive? He ate like five bombs. This is the worst day of my life. I have no one to blame but myself, and yet I don't think this is my fault. One depressing run back later, the bull by were defeated, and hopefully the reward for their bodies is equal to 30 Pikmin souls. Inside the stump was a boss that we've already fought before, so I'll save you the dramatics, but in the middle of the fight, this asshole showed up and just stole two of my guys. Both fights were over quick, but I was not able to spitefully bring back the part or the corpses because I guess I forgot to build this all-powerful twig bridge. At least I know what I'm gonna start with tomorrow on day
Before I could get the part, we had to take down, you guessed it, another wall. And because I'm a multitasking genius, I left half of them over here to work and took the other half to get decimated by a single frog. I know this entire game has been me watching a bunch of unpaid interns do all the work while I take all the credit, but today especially was a whole lot of waiting around as they built the necessary bridges and I checked up on them every five seconds. Before long, the first part of the day was collected and I crammed every Pikmin possible across yet another death bridge for the next one. Somehow the whole squad was able to make it there and back without any casualties, or rather any casualties that were my fault. The only thing better than 24 parts is beautiful number 25. I finished out the evening picking fights with even more frogs, and I don't know how to wrap this up. The day is over. Blowing up enough walls granted us access to our zirconium rotor. And even better, this spot turned out to be a bit of a gold mine, because just a couple tree stumps over was the pilot's seat. There was no time for funny business anymore. We were grabbing parts like we only had a few days left to live. Hey, that reminds me. Some quick thinking and geyser shenanigans later led to us acquiring our last part of the day. On the return trip, I needed to defend from attack slugs after admittedly just kind of watching and hoping they wouldn't eat anyone. And after distracting a balloon creature with a single blue Pikmin, all was well as we returned safely with a good haul. At the end of the day, all I could think about was that the distant spring had only just a single part left to be rescued and two total parts remaining before our adventure as a whole was completed. We were closer than ever at having the chance to go home, closer than ever to seeing my children. I just needed determination to find the part. I found the part. 29 pieces of scrap were finally combined to bring the Supertron Hypernova Starship Omega back to almost full power. In the forest depths below, I see a region where the final part must lie. Clearly, this is my final trial. Our last stop on this cruel, unforgettable journey had no time for a fun, catchy name. This was, as Olimar described it, the final trial. Even with the amount of days left I had to finish this challenge, I was not prepared for what was to come. Landing the ship shows that, as expected, this area wasn't somewhere we could even really explore if we wanted to. It was a puzzle triad that required the use and knowledge of every Pikmin-related who's and what's it I've learned about on our journey, and I didn't learn much. Using the blue squadron, I got them building bridges on each side of the middle island, and the best way I knew to take care of that wall was through the help and sacrifice of some mighty yellow warriors. Then it was time for the Reds to take a turn. Maneuvering the Red Pikmin through the fire and the flames allowed them to push a cardboard box, letting the rest of us pass through with ease. Behind this final wall was a massive sand pit and something suspiciously sticking out of it. Before I engaged with the definitely harmless plant, I prepared myself with a large collection of bombs hiding around the arena's edges. To take down the ultimate enemy, I was going to have to make friends with my greatest enemy. Approaching the sand pit's core, revealed a horrible monster lying underneath. Who could have expected this? Are you serious? Lord Bulbus had made his first and final appearance. To win this fight, the Pikmin are going to have to wait until he opens his mouth and carefully time shoving a bomb down his throat. And with an impervious shell on his back, our only option is to stay on the front lines and attack from there. I know I'm not a perfect person, but how on earth does this guy see this situation and say, ah yes, a perfect time to throw an explosive and get myself killed. And worse, inspire others to let it happen, like three more times. Still, they were ultimately helpful in dealing enough damage to bring him painfully low, but now we were completely out of bombs and dangerously close to being completely out of time. With my last resort, I chose to attack at any cost. Against the odds, Lord Bulbus was defeated, and he spat out the 30th and final part, my piggy bank. As he buried himself deep in the sand, I had to act extremely fast and get everyone capable working to bring the last piece home. I even went back to get reinforcements. And just as sundown began, we made it. The Supertron Hypernova Starship Omega Mark II was 100% repaired. I may have suffered a lot thanks to these soldiers, but they also suffered a lot thanks to me. So come nightfall, I waved back longingly at the best little guys I could have asked for and watched like the proudest father in the world as they jumped and beat the shit out of that creature. They learned to survive on their own. And you know, I think I might've learned a thing or two as well. And I'll truly never forget what we all had together. God f 
Fucking damn it. Thank you to Sintoki, Lyra Hubble, Wayward Rosalind, Brennan Grissel, and all my other patron subscribers and YouTube supporters, as well as an extra, extra special shout out to Dr. Monkey. You all made this video possible. If you'd like to see more, check out the video I'm posting on my other channel, Shinto's Light. Thank you. And never forget, Ben lied, Pikmin died.